Welcome back to live coverage of the WCS Europe Season 2 Premier League Group C. We are done with our upper bracket for now, but we will come back to the winner's game, Manor versus First, for the first place through in Group C to the quarterfinals. Already saw four players go through, of course, this week. And tomorrow, you can catch more action from WCS Europe via Group D. We're going to concentrate on the lower bracket now. Kalaris is back with me. Um, an intriguing prospect ahead of us with Golden versus Grubby. It's the... Perhaps some would have predicted this, perhaps some not, but at the time of the first map, you'd have said, hang on a bit, Grubby looks pretty good. All of a sudden, it changes rounds. Just shows you that small things can make a massive difference. So in the lower bracket right now, it's Grubby versus Golden to stay alive in WCS Europe. And Grubby's been here before. Yeah, yeah, he has. Uh, in terms of round of 16, I believe, going up against... Uh, a mountain of Terrans. <laughs> last season, yes. Yeah, yeah Jack G and Daishi last year. Uh, both of those 2 0 2 0. So he's done a little bit better than that with a, a 1 2 uh, versus Manor. What, what do you think he takes out of that? And what do you think he, he applies to this? Bearing in mind it's a totally different matchup, of course. Well, I think he has to take or try and take a lot from the initial series. And because if he goes through this, he's guaranteed another Protoss, right? To have to battle against to try and qualify. Um, but in terms of a Zerg, you know, he uh, there's only one Zerg in this group. He only had to prepare for technically this match, aside from uh, all of his Protoss. So we'll see what he has available. Yeah, uh, in terms of head-to-head -head as well, it's worth telling you that uh, they have played three matches before, and Grubby has won every single time against Golden 2-1. Same result every time they've played. So that bodes well for him. Yeah, yeah, it does. And Grubby's, Grubby's PVZ as taken so many transitions over, over over the time, be it all the two base plays that he was doing quite a bit ago, and then there's always been these like sparks where he's always gone into big, big macro games. So he has a lot of tools available to him, uh, and he's just witnessed exactly what Golden is capable of in this matchup. Do you think he may have seen anything uh, in that game? Because Golden, for a while, looked quite good, especially in game two. Um, as Sean pointed out in the analysis, he was kind of countering everything that first threw at him until the end, where he, uh, where he blew the chance to win. So... I don't suppose Golden's feeling too down about that first match, is he? I mean, Golden probably always knew that going up against first was going to be difficult because, again, for, for me, for Sean, he is the rising favorite here in this group, considerably so. Um, but now going up against Grubby and then potentially going up against a, a different Protoss opponent in the final as well. Uh, the, the style he plays is really, really strong, really strong Ling Roach into eventual Mutalisk. Um, but again, this has been shown now. Can Grubby deal with it? Has he prepared enough for that kind of style? Mm. Okay. Um, when we look at statistics, and I've used statistics a few times just to see where you know how the two players stack up, it's very interesting to me that uh, using a Ligulac, which you know, which is nice shout out for you guys doing a great job out there. Um, Grubby ranked right now 130 nights in the world, which just seems absurd to me, when, especially when we look at him in the round of 16. A Ligulac ranks Golden as 53 in the world, which tremendously higher. If this were a tennis game and we were looking at rankings, we wouldn't even be discussing the possibility of Grubby winning yeah. the match. But this is very different. Yeah, it goes to show that in the world there are a lot of good Koreans. Succinctly put, I would have to agree. Yes, there are. Uh, we are into the uh, map vetoes and unsurprisingly, Way Station has already been removed. We're flying through them right now because Autism Stronghold, or as uh, James likes to call it, Autism Station. Like once. I, I just picked up on it. <sighs> and we right. have to stick with it now. King, King, King Sejong Stronghold. Yeah, go on then. <laughs> uh, so that one's got Merry Go Round has gone as well. And so has Frost. Frost, uh, we haven't seen it today. Most popular map used so far in round of 16 alongside Overgrowth. Second most popular in round of 32, and it's yeah. not been played today. Overgrowth being coming the flying favorite, as it, it were. It really is, yeah. Uh, King Sejong, Habitation, and Overgrowth will be our three maps. What do you think of that? I don't mind too much. I'm curious to see what's going to be first. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Overgrowth to start things off, because everyone just seems so comfortable on this map nowadays. Uh, it doesn't matter what, uh, what race, either. Yeah, yeah, it really doesn't. Uh, again, now it is the clear favourite, uh, not even just across Premier, but also Premier and Challenger for this season. So it's really gained a lot of traction. Would not be surprised in the slightest if it carried well with how people really do prefer it. Well, it's, uh, it's quite unusual as well, when we're talking about the map, to see a new map come into the pool and just be the most popular map straight away. It's quite unusual. I mean, we haven't seen that for a while. Yeah. Uh, I think back to all the different seasons of WCS and GSL. And uh, new maps tend to be the ones pushed lower down the order. Do you, yes. what, do you, what do you think that is this year? What is it about Overgrowth that's so great? I think a lot of maps nowadays are revolving around 
Can I take a good third? Is it easy to take a good third? How well can I wall that off as a Protoss? How well can I equally try and defend it as a Zerg, etc.? Uh, if we're looking at this match specifically. Um, and there's not too many harassment capabilities on a map like Overgrowth, like, say, for example, Reapers jumping into a main against Protoss. Uh, and it's not terrible for Terran either. So all in all, it just makes for a good solid round map. Uh, and then on the flip side, you've got a map like Waystation, which nobody wants to play apart from first. So, <laughs> yeah, who doesn't seem to care what map he plays right now as well, because he's in a lot of confidence. Um, with these two going head to head, there's a massive gap in experience, tournament experience right now. Yeah. Uh, Golden obviously spent most of last year in the wilderness and not playing in any of the tournaments, trying to qualify for them. Grubby, on the other hand, five consecutive seasons of round of 16, uh, sorry, of Premier League. And not only that, more than 10 years of experience of playing in yeah. tournaments in the highest level. That experience has to count for something right now, otherwise Grubby's going home. Yeah, I, I probably. I, I think that, you know, whilst Golden isn't exactly probably some, some guy to get very nervous about this position, you know, it must be weighing a little bit more on him than a guy that has so much experience, in essence, like Grubby, who, you know, has been through this time and time again. It's in his repertoire, it's in his entire psyche to be in these kind of tournament situations. Uh, and he takes it very, very seriously. Yeah, absolutely. He's got uh, a lot of things going for him here as well. There's a lot of little things. He's got his book, he's got his water, and uh, he's got his wife here as well. As you saw just in the picture there, Cassandra talking to him. And uh, I don't quite know what they'll be talking about, but uh, it's... Uh, My not, cologne. No, your cologne, yeah, probably apparently. the smell of your cologne. Uh, keep them coming, because they're fun and we like them. Uh, but yeah, you didn't enjoy that. That was fine. I mean, really? they can do that. that really? Uh, okay. Right. Horrific picture of me, but whatever. <laughs> I, thought <laughs> but you, I thought you got away with that. Trust me, James. Yeah. I thought there could have been oh, much okay. more embarrassing pictures. Okay. On a postcard, please write to us if you can find a no. more embarrassing picture of Kalara. I'm joking. There are a few. There are. There has to be a few more out there, right? Yeah, See, what have are. you done now? That's a bad mistake to make. Unbelievable. Right, enough messing around here over at the Terran table with the Infiltrator. Let's head on over to the commentators for game number three in Group C. One of these men is going home. Is it Grubby or Golden? Thank you very much, Red Eye, and once again, welcome to the Caster's Desk. And we'll be bringing you this next game with the live commentary of the most awesomest individual ever, the ever so glowing, the Muslim. How are you oh. doing, guys? Why, thank you, Sean. But uh, yeah, so we're going into a series with Grubby and Golden. That's really cool. I mean, they both just came off pretty hard losses, but these guys on no pushovers whatsoever. Grubby had a very, very tight series against Mana, 2-1. And even going over to the third game, which was a crazy macro series, um, and it looks very peaceful there, too. So, yeah, <laughs> just, just looking at him, <laughs> just accepting how peaceful he looks. Yep, he's... Uh... Peaceful or stressed out, actually. I'm not sure how to look at it. I put my fingers into my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. I was shook. I just had to ruin the mood. You, you did. You did. But no, I think you, you, you lightened me up. You put a smile on my face, dear Apollo. That's oh, what I Apollo do, Apollo even. That's what I do. You got, you got that stuck in your brain like day nine. Yeah. Well, I remember you from uh, eight years ago or so when you were winning gold medals at WCGs and stuff. I remember you the same stud you were back then as you are today. Oh, sure. Stop. Um, all right. So who, who's your favorite for this, Golden or Grubby? You I'm, know, I'm going to tell you mine once you tell me yours. You know, I don't know what Grubby has in that book. If he has everything that Golden's ever done, you have to put Grubby ahead. But I think Golden actually handled himself pretty decently in those games. But he overdroned like a madman. And I'm not right. sure if he's like so comfortable. Whereas Grubby still put up a very, very solid series. So I'm, I'm going to go with Grubby here. Oh, I'm going to say Golden. Wow, okay. Yeah. Cool. I, I don't want to say Golden, but I have to. He's very good. I don't trust my... Uh, your heart. Oh, 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 heart. oh, that. Yeah, your, your, your big heart. Yes. <laughs> Gotta trust my brain. All right. Welcome to the first map of this best of three. Up here to the top right hand side is the red Protoss. It's Grubby. Very important series for him, of course, but likewise important for the player down in the bottom left is the blue Zerg. Team Alien Invasion, it's Golden. Golden's one of the happiest little Koreans to uh, come to these events as well. He is a very merry individual. Very merry, just comes in. I remember when he had a very funny haircut too, and he just came in, big smile on his face, said hello to everybody, 
definitely not a shy young man. Reminds me a little bit of Tails. Um, a little bit on the shyer side, but definitely obnoxious hair. Obnoxious hair. Oh, um, when Tails proud of it. He dyed it ginger and kind of shaved it. Strawberry. Strawberry? He had a strawberry at the uh, the IPL 4 qualifier that we uh, were at that one time. He definitely had a funny haircut. You're totally right. But strawberry on his head. Kind of like Tails, except he's not cheesy. Ooh, what is this? This Grubby. is very early. Grubby. A second Double pylon, pylon as well. On. Whoa, okay. This is Yo, awkward. Bro. I, I mean, is this going to work out against Golden, given that Golden scouts with a drone so early and you got to see him do that against first is both it? series prior? Like, I, okay. Where's this probe right. going? I was wondering what this was. It's going to be a cannon rush, but a fake cannon rush. He's ah. going to fake the Nexus, but he's really doing the cannon rush, so it's like a double bluff thing. Whoa, so whoa. He's like, Grubby's like, no, don't, don't block me. Oh, this is very smart by Grubby. Though, but in reality... He's actually going to cannon rush. And if you think about how Golden played in the previous series, he was going three hatch, man. He was so, going three uh, hatch before pool. And yeah, there's no pool in sight. He's up to 17 supply here. And immediately throws down a bit of a pilot. It is in range, though. It's in vision of Golden. Yeah, so. he wants him to pull drones down here. It's a hatch first. See, I, uh, against hatch first, I think he's confident to do this. If it doesn't work, if this doesn't work, then Grubby is in big trouble. So he has to make this work. And he's that confident. I think that he's shown it anyway. And this, pro this probe does get... <gasps> oh! The probe dies immediately. Things just got bad. <laughs> Things just got very bad. I mean, his Nexus is going down, but yeah. that was a good 250 minerals inside his base that never got put to good use. If you aren't confident in doing the cannon rush, there is no reason to put it inside of the hatchery here. Oh, that's uh, that's dreadful for Grubby because his plan was obviously to cannon rush and golden. Oh, man. He, he, uh... Grubby doesn't even know if there's a third hatch or spawn and pull down. That's just how bad this is. Oh, that's um, highly unfortunate for Grubby, but he let it get surrounded, then tried to mineral walk at the closest minerals, but that was where all those drones were and just took a beating from all of them. Oh, dear. I mean, Grubby's opening was incredibly smart. Like, he played Golden. He got to see him in a series and got to see what his method was each game, but unfortunately for him, got caught out massively there. Tricky Ricky not working today. Tricky um, Ricky. So yeah, so Grubby takes a bit of a, a bit of a hit in the early part of this game for sure. I mean, his Nexus should have already been done if he's going for a fast Nexus first. He's just overall behind. It's a big, big investment. Uh, and, you know, Golden gets a bit of a boost to push him forward in the earlier stages here. But I wonder what Grubby has planned next. He's moving out with another probe um, quite early, actually. Whether this is to scout if a two-base attack is to come, if he's to scout if the third base is there or not. Whether he's to hide that probe for later on. Either way, not not the start he was hoping for at yeah. all. Whenever you try and go for a sort of counter build like that and it fails, you're always feeling a little miserable. Upon seeing that his pylon died to Lings, he knows that his opponent went for a little bit of a later third than normal, which is good, I guess, given that Grubby couldn't apply any pressure. But Even these the probes, probes gonna get stopped. Oh, these everything. probes! Yeah, the, this probe and Zergling—it's like lovers, you know. They just kind of find each other. But the probe—it's like that girl that really doesn't want that guy and uh, gets chased down. Not oh. a good start for the Grubster. Um, in a very difficult position. Currently working on a Sentry um, and Walkgate Research, of course. I wonder where he goes from now. Does he try to play greedy from this position? Um, I mean, he's got the tools necessary for a fast third. Does he? Look to take gases soon. Does he, does he throw down a Stargate or some form of tech now? At the moment, it's looking like a third base for me. Decently fast plus one weapon going yeah. down for Grubby. So he could take a page out of first book and see seeing what he did on the first map between those two, King Sejong, where he pushed out with a lot of sentries and got a third up very early. Mm. I mean, that'd be pretty decent too, but a couple of gateways going down at the natural, out of vision. So oh. a lot of gateways, but also a lot of probes that Grubby's at, so... It is a lot of gateways, actually. Three gateways with no tech building on the way. Yeah, unless he's going to take the third off the back of these gateways, just a little bit safer than without the gateways, obviously, but a little bit later of a nexus. Um, that's what it seems to be currently. Uh, whereas Golden on the other side, man, is having a great time. He's drone just... central, baby. He, yeah, he's just droning up like a madman. But still, 51 drones to the 41. Grubby's done a good Ooh. job of keeping up. He actually uh, swung around to where the third was going to be taken. Well, it looked like he was going to take a third with the pro, but actually he's moved down to place a pylon on the gold. Um, so he's going to complete with four gateways. His plus one's not really anywhere close to being done. 
Hmm, but those four gateways are completed along with the warp gate all in time. But look at this by Golden. Like, straight away finds yeah. this probe in this pylon. So nothing's working. Nothing's working at all. Like, despite Grubby having the book that has all the information, it, Golden's the guy that's reading Grubby and just predicting him yeah, so this, well. Yeah, there's 22 links to... Uh Accompany the four that are already out, so he's going to chase down the majority of these units, and especially without plus one even done yet, these zealots aren't good enough to match this. Um, and especially with the roach one finishing up, more lings on the way. Overall, Grubby's just uh, in a very difficult and awkward spot, and more forward pylons been placed. Uh, yeah, but they're getting caught out every time. And Grubby's really pushing this. He is, in only four zealots here. They do have the upgrade finishing soon, which makes them deal with the zerglings much better, but. Golden's just handling himself very well. What's his drone count? 60 to 46, yeah, and, and, he's still, more. and he's still droning. Yeah, he's almost, well, pretty much fully saturated now. In on, that's a lot of gas he's about to bring in. Um, still sees that Grubby's on no um, third base. He's got a, I mean, he's got a Roach Warren finished up. You probably expect some Roaches to be built against the heavy amount of Zealots that are here. Just going for Lings, though, yeah. at this point. Does he have a Spine Crawler at his third? Uh, no. Yes, yes. It's right at the back. Okay, I mean, that's decent positioning, mm. but... And now the roaches are coming out, so he kind of tried to pop those roaches out the last moment he could, yeah. which is, is solid. And the supplies, very, very good for gold. And what's going to be doing behind this? Lots uh, of gateways. Warp Prism on the main as well, tried to get the, the ramp uh, force field off, but got pushed back. So nothing wow. working here. But he has got into this third, but... I mean, he shouldn't lose too many drones here. And it he should defend this. Recalls out, too. Now the Warp yeah. Prism in the main is trying to get something done, but can it really do anything? No, the attention of Golden's there. Behind this, Colossus on the way. Um, we already have the Spire finished, which has now been spotted, which is Alarm Bells. And uh, Golden's going straight for Corruptors rather than any sort of Muda stuff. So yeah. even though Grubby, like, Grubby has no third and can't put up a third given there's an Overlord blocking it, so Golden's just one step ahead this game right from the get-go and oh grubby's not having a good game no not at all here but he's pushing forward what prism is going to be able to warp in some more units at this forward zell nogatau good that's a good start oh what a donut right there yeah that's a great start to this fight oh and even picks up that wounded sentry there so that's not gonna die that was a really nice catch for Grubby, yeah. and if he is going to get back into the, this game, he has to continue with moves like that. Yeah, he's got to do definitely... That was a great start to this fight, but he's definitely got to do more moves like that because he's by no means ahead in supply, close to being able to take a good fight here. Um, he has a Colossus with this army, but the sheer amount of roaches will plow down, I would imagine. So, so many roaches. They've also got plus one damage and the five Corruptors, so that Warp Prism is under far threat. Also, the Colossi, and yeah, this is a huge amount of roaches just marching forward. Yeah, they're going to march forward. They got plus one attack. The Colossus is not going to survive. Wow. And neither does Grubby, and he gets absolutely smashed in that game. That wasn't close at all. It, oh, it wasn't close at all. And is it because Grubby's a worse player than Golden? Well, I mean, that game would indicate that, but no, right from the get-go. Um, Grubby read the situation, read Golden very well with that cannon rush idea. Um, Golden, upon scouting, saw, hey, look, um, <laughs> hey, look, um, he's going for a Nexus first, but Grubby hit that pylon yeah. forge in his, in his main base. Smart, 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 but upon placing the pylon, it even finished and then lost his probe. So, so many minerals put to use that accomplish absolutely nothing. So, Grubby, Upon losing that first game, goes into the second game. He, he can't feel like, hey, this guy's way better than me. It's just, hey, my strategy didn't work out at all. Like, fresh game, fresh start, let's go. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Little smiley fella. <laughs> Little cheeky guy. He's like, suck it in, man. He's also the youngest player in WCS. He is, Mr. Facts. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of weird to say that because he's been around for quite a while, it feels. Like Golden, I've always remembered him as this guy with freaky APM and, uh, you know, crazy fast fingers. Well, there's a lot you can do with those fast fingers, Ben. There, there is, there is. And uh, StarCraft's uh, the number one um, thing. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Grubby's, uh, yeah, Grubby's yeah, yeah. tense, man. Grubby's tense. He, like, he's yeah. one map. One map away from being eliminated. One single map. It, uh, and he did so well in the round of 16 as well. Um, or rather, round of 32, where yeah. 
He defeated, or oh, he's in a group with Vortex, Patience, Tefl, none of which are easy. And he's going against Patience, beat him 2 0. Then somewhere out of nowhere, Tefl beat Vortex. So he right. managed to take out Tefl 2 0 as well and uh, found himself in the round of 16 despite his uh, rather unfortunate predicament as of late. But this group's just not going his way. No, it's not. I know there's a lot of Grubby fans out there, and he is, uh, you know, hoping that he can drag his way through this series. It's been a difficult day. Started off with a good series versus Mana, um, a very close one, which, to be fair, really could have gone either way, but he's been put up against a very, very difficult Zerg player right now. Grubby's made comebacks in the past. Remember, one of the famous things that Grubby said in the past, losing map number one is a kick to the balls to get ready for map number two and map number three. Maybe that can come true once again for him. As he needs as much support and as much power from within to be able to tackle this beast. It is a very nice photo of Grubby there. You know, even if he does lose, we get to see that lovely face of his. It is time for war. Up here to the top left of Habitation Station as the red Protoss player. None other than a man himself, it's Grubby. And he must have a plan now. He must have a plan. This map was chosen, by the way, by the player to the top right. There's Excuse me, Germany, water with bubbles. The blue Zerg player, it's Golden. And his map choice. His map choice, and this is kind of an awkward one to go on against a player like Golden. Whenever you play those freakish Zergling kind of guys, they start making hatcheries all over the chop. I remember seeing Life multiple times, got two bases cannon rush, then took his opponent's gold and such. And right. whenever you have a map with a gold base, the tempo of the game changes, especially if they do actually use it. Uh, the threat of them taking it is cool. Just looking at photos of yourself, Sean? No, no, I was uh, looking oh, at the yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the mirror, eh? The mirror? Oh, yeah. I get distracted by myself all the time, too, if I looked <laughs> like you. I wasn't looking at me, me. Uh, <laughs> all right. Grubby, not playing any tricks, not trying anything special. It's mm -hmm. just going to be a late forge and expand. Is it going to be an expand on the natural, though? Where is he heading? Well, you'd think that it wouldn't be anything too nuts. Uh, currently at 16 supply, coming up to 17. He's going to challenge the... Drone here, of course. Drone versus Probe One and One is in favor of the drone. Oh, just let him get away with it, though. Yeah, he's uh, Grubby goes right over to the gold here, knowing that his opponent chose this map straight away, and that's interesting. That is interesting. Rather than just, and is he going to go for blocking the other third as well with this probe, or going to go for a scout? I mean, oh, look at this. This is interesting. He's definitely anticipating three hatch before pool here. Right. Oh, this oh, drone gives him the slip immediately, though. Yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, Scorby would have liked to block that by the looks of his uh, plan. And a gateway going down, meaning that no cannon rushes are available from this point on anyhow. The pylon wasn't cancelled at the third with the gold base either. So, you know, a few wasted minerals there, but I guess they'll come in handy if he does send a drone immediately up there without sending lings up there in the first place. But that very rarely happens at this level of play. I wonder what's going through Grubby's mind right now. This is uh, not the easiest spots to be in, but I know he's been in a lot worse than this. He has, and through his very, very long career, he's been world champion multiple times, winning WCGs back in the old Warcraft 3 days. And uh, just recently in StarCraft 2, or when I say just recently, over the last year or so, built up quite the following. And rightly so, he got really good and really smart at this game. Has always had very, very... Very crisp for control, but this series, Golden, you get shaken up when a player reads you so well. Right, Grubby fans, he's doing okay so far. He is doing all right. Just thought I'd put that out there. He is doing all right so far. The series against Mana was uh, a phenomenal one. It's always lovely to see a macro game go out to, or turn the way that that one did. And uh, here, Habitation Station, even though he let the third get up in the way that it did, um, that's, not, that's not a huge kick in the teeth. Mm. It just... Uh, just not that pleasant. Stalker is the unit to pop out here first for uh, Grubby. He did choose Sentry last time, remember? Um, just the difference between the game one and game two. Uh, Golden on the other side of things. No gases at all so far. And we see 
the choice of tech from Grubby. It is going to be the robotics facility. We all know what can come from the robotics facility, De Muslim. We certainly do, Apollo. And no gases at the expo yet. And there, drops one down. Whether he drops second? Yes, a second. So, oh, doesn't look like it's going to be one of those crazy immortal Zella only yeah. kind of all ends. But um, could be a later one with a bit of a more powerful punch of units, more so than just zealots. Yeah, the walk distance over to your opponent's base is pretty small on this map with only a Zelnaga watchtower in the middle, which is covered by Golden. Mm. But at this point in time, Golden's uh, a little in the dark, and this Overlord is met by a Stalker, which will again deny vision. And the Sentry is pushing back the Overlord, or doing damage to the one on the natural here. Um, is it going to get spotted? I... The Stalker comes back to help push this back. But I think he is going to... Ah. Yeah, does see this here. So that Overlord was definitely worth but a lot there. I got to see every gas, got to see the Robo. One though, to Muslim, a lot of the Chrono Boost is into the oh. Nexus, right? Oh. He's saturated really fast, really fast two bases, and he hasn't rushed out Immortals or high unit count overall. And he's on one gateway. And Forge and Twilight. Yeah, upon seeing that, at first it's a robotics bay, and then he oh. moved his probe again, and then he put down the Forge and Twilight Council. So. I don't know if Grubby feels a little, uh, it's like a, a little flustered here. I think it might be a third base here, more so than anything. I'm not sure this is an attack or not. He's got more than enough probes for two bases. He's already been spotted to be having an attack on the way. I think he'll take a third, just with kind of a, a mortal. Uh, a warp prism, Twilight Council on the way. DTs? Oh, I, I, a big switch up. Huge switch ups. and. You know, like, nothing went really yeah. bad in this game, but did he notice something but in Golden's play that kind of worried him? It's, it's in funny, place? because Golden doesn't even have that low of a drone count. He's built an additional 10 or so links, and is still heading towards 67 or so drones. Yeah, Golden... He, he loves a good drone or two. <laughs> he, he certainly does, and he's not playing scared here at all. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> Okay, two Immortals in a Warp Prism here, so these can start dropping and dealing quite a bit of damage. Yeah. Uh, but there's so many Overlords on the map, so they'll immediately see this Warp Prism. They don't know what's in it, if anything, but... Uh, uh, he hasn't spotted it yet, by the way. I'm just looking through Golden's vision. Yet to spot the Warp Prism yet. I'll tell you exactly when he does. Still without spotting it, by the way. Wow. Still without spotting it. Has not spotted the Warp Prism in his main. Going for... Has still not spotted the Warp Prism in his oh. main. Only now. Now was the first time he looked at it. Wow, okay, so that was quite a bit of time. And this, these immortals arrive at this base uh, totally unscathed and meeting nobody. So warping in some zealots taking advantage of this here is Grubby. While taking a third base back at home here, DT going to get warped in as well. The immortal gets stuck. Oh, no, it squeezes past the mineral line and does get out. The DT warping is so cool. Now we start hacking away at these drones, and there's nothing really here to, uh, yeah. to see that even picks off a Hydra. And behind this, Blink on the way, plus one can go over to plus two. Robotics Bay coming in, a nice move from Grubby. But of course, an opponent that was already at 70 drones, he does have a lot of work to be doing, but he is starting to do that. He certainly is, and gets up his third as well behind this. So this attack, very well planned. Ooh. Defended the counter attack with the Lings, and look, spots the Spire. It starts focusing down the Spire immediately. This Spire is going to serve no purpose now, and that's a huge structure to pick off. Yeah, only two Corruptors get out from that Spire. That means the Colossus deck is just more emphasized, but it's just stronger coming into the next part of this because there are nothing to deal with the Colossus, which is going to start to enter the game. We do have 13 drones, but Golden, He's sending out a couple oh, of units. Look at this too. This immortal drop focuses down the queen, picking off that spore crawler too, if he can. But there is an overseer here, nice. so that DT will. Uh... Oh, whoa! That's a huge loss there. Not nice. <laughs> Not nice. Not indeed. nice there. Um, but was that good enough? I would say it was good, but it, the thing, the problem is, it was good. And it, but it could have been so much more, though. That's the biggest thing about that. It could have kept going for a long time. With only two Corruptors, could have got some more damage, could have walked in a little bit more. Uh, and I guess the answer is it wasn't quite good enough, you know? I mean, yes, he did damage. Yes, he, oh. he prevented attacks from coming. He got to see tech. He got to cancel tech, too, with that Spire kill. But 
here at this point in time, Golden's been on mm. three base solid saturation for a long time. And while his army isn't scary, even his fourth base yeah. is up, taking a fifth also. He's got no evolution chambers in this game, so it looks like we're going to see like a sky play from him. I would imagine Mutalist this time around, not, not Corruptors. Um, and we are taken to the skies. He's on four bases, a fifth one on the way now as well. Oh, it's, it's, I, Golden's playing really good at this point in time. He's keeping Grubby on his side of the map, and Grubby has a decent army marching out, and Golden's army isn't that mm. solid, but Golden anticipates this, and yeah. he starts putting up defensive spine crawlers. But, the, I mean, with a good round of units of Stalkers continuing to be warped in with plus two. Oh, catching a few Stalkers, but they have Link, maybe? No. Yes. But, oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Um, but... Uh, um, there is an opportunity for Grubby to do well, but the problem is the counterattacks more so than anything, the base trade option of this. Yeah, that's exactly what Golden looks like he's going for here, hunting down probes. And this army of Grubby is scary, Ooh. but this is still a decent squad by Golden left behind. It's going to be, you can't just run through this and yeah. kill his economy. And Grubby's lost his only pile on reinforcement here, so he only has these units. He keeps the Colossus alive. Oh, oh, that mo oh, that Mothership Core has very little health here, too. This army could be trapped, and that's a lot of sentries getting picked off. Uh oh grubby has got a blink home. Oh, I mean, he's, he's standing strong here, but that's a lot of Mutalists he has to deal with. And look at that. Links. Oh, and that time what buys him a little bit of time, probably enough to get away here. Yeah, and uh, go join up with the rest of these units. But Blink is only good for so long in this game. The, the, the sharper the rise of Mutalists, the worse these Stalkers become. And unfortunately, Grubby's going to have to figure out either kill his opponent fast or make a big switch up. But currently, he's only on the same units. No Stargate available either. And while he has cannons and his mineral lines and warps in, in right, like very promptly, actually, it's yeah. still a position you don't want to be in because how do you march out across the map when your opponent has lots of muters? You, you can't. And yeah. Golden's on five bases now. Sounds like, uh, well, it looks a bit like uh, a bit of deja vu coming in with a double Stargate. The same like first did before, but Golden's much faster into the game. He's got the fourth base, which he didn't have the last time the double star gates come. He's got a fifth base in. He's already got so many mutilists and so much income. And Golden is running over this game. He certainly is. Now we have first person view of Golden, so you can see how fast he really is. Just injecting everything at the speed of light. Wow. Solid play by him. Scouting with just a single muter here too. So smart play, taking advantage of how fast those muters actually are and seeing, seeing the switch as it happens. Oh, man, this is not good. Um, These DTs, though. <laughs> Those DTs are... We can't see the DTs, the Muslim! We're in Golden's vision! And he can't see them either, which is the problem. He's losing everything here. And that harvest counts is eight... Well, it's still 82 drones against the 70 harvesters of Grubby, but as Grubby clings on here, time is helping him out. While he's only on three bases, mm. he's putting together a Phoenix army, which... Muters don't want to be against the yeah, follow. And, and to be honest, neither do Corruptors with, I mean, range Phoenixes. Come on, they're ranged. They, they got larger range than you, than you guys have. So it's quite difficult to play against. Um, Golden ideally would like to start to switch to Infestors to Fungal and lock them down, you'd imagine. But he might just be willing to overwhelm. But there is the Infestation Pit, so I guess that is true. But at least Grubby's fighting in. He hasn't given up yet. He's still got a long road ahead of him, though. It is a long road, and Golden looking to pile on a bit of pressure or hoping to catch the army out of place, but Grubby's doing the right thing. He's fight or positioning himself against walls here. Risky blink forward, could have got totally <laughs> caught out, but uh, balls of steel, well, He's Grubby. got that balls fifth base on lockdown. Uh, and, and that's one way to get yourself back into this. Three bases, he's putting his fourth base down too. This is a huge Mutalisk flock, but if they do fly in range of cannons, stalkers, and then the Phoenix come to help out. Oh God, that is so many Mutalisks. It's a huge amount of Mutalisks and lots of Corruptors being added to the fray too. Eight at a time right now, but Whoa. the Phoenix count, it is racking up rather quickly. He's already at nine and three continuously being produced at a time. Well, Grubby did get the fifth. He's still harassing with DTs where he can. Um, we actually see the Swarm Host, uh, oh. the, drone, uh, uh, the drone Locust upgrade coming in. I thought we'd see Pathogen Glands. The Locust upgrade doesn't make much sense to me. You'd imagine the one unit that is stopping Gordon from just walking over this game, the Phoenix, will be locked down with Infestus for then the Corruptors to nail. But funny switch. It, it is a funny switch. and. Maybe he's taking advantage of the fact that, hey, my opponent hasn't got many Colossi out, if mm. not any. Um, and then 
he has a pretty decent anti-colossi army, so maybe he's just thinking that. But yeah, you're totally right. All it needs to win this game is a nice fungal on those Phoenix. Then you just overwhelm your opponent. But maybe he's banking on the the fact that Grubby has very good control. Maybe and he won't maybe. be able to do that. Um, I, I do. I mean, it's not a bad switch. The Swarmus It's just not the more traditional one. Uh, like you said, Swarmus are going to be great on the ground. That really isn't the ideal army. Remember the ideal army, at least for Protoss in the mid game, is like Colossus Stalker, which Colossus aren't here. And then later, it's an air army, which is not really going to happen for a long time here. So I, I can see it making work, but the, this air man, it's destroyed the Stalkers inside the main base. The Corruptor's zoning perfectly here, but the Phoenixes are doing a lot of damage. They do have plus one. They do do range with. More stalkers getting warped in. They do help against this army, but still. Oh. Look how his army's movement's gone south. Where is he going? He's pushing across the map here, and there's only a few Hydras to greet him. And so Grubby, despite being under threat in his main base, he's doing very well micring both locations, and is going to take out a fifth base again by the oh, looks of it. This is so good from Grubby if he's able to deal with both locations, which he is. I mean, he's very much down in supply, but he's keeping the Zerg away from another base. The big problem, well, he sees the Swarm of Switch. That's a good scout indirectly there. Oh, we maybe lost a couple of Phoenixes there, but it's good tracking from these Phoenixes to hopefully join those Stalkers up as Ooh, well. One, <laughs> one Phoenix just ran way far ahead there, but Grubby, 140 supply-ish against 170. Keeps taking out that fifth or fourth yeah. or fifth base even. And now he's on four bases himself. And this base, seven cannons sat at it. Grubby's getting himself into a really good situation here. I wonder what his next plan is, though, taking a fifth. Well, he's got to start to think about increasing his army again, though. You can't just be sitting on Stalker Phoenix. Yeah, you're totally right. And with Swarm Host coming out, one of the best ways to deal with them is keeping the Locusts at bay with Colossi. But given he already has three Stargates available, yeah. lots of minerals to plant down cannons and stuff, maybe we're just going to see a total air switch by Grubby. Or stick to the skies more so with the Phoenix, the, the amount of Phoenixes that he's got. Stay in the air, man. And are there any infestors? One infestor on the field. So he, oh, he plays an important role here mm. for Golden because as this air army develops for Grubby, that air army of Golden is going to start melting. Second Robo coming in from Grubby and plus three attack. He is, by the looks of it, Colossi. switching to Colossus then. Thermal Lance now coming in. He'll start building two by two soon once that's finished. Um, but the, for the time being, he's establishing a fifth base, which is very, very good for him. And he's actually got control of the south of this map. Uh, even finding Ooh. a Swarmos there. And a Corruptor. That was a nice pickoff because at this point in time, despite Golden have, having such a sick income, his bank's entirely gone. Yeah. And Grubby's got a lot of money. Grubby's making this work. He's playing a very good game here. Considering the circumstances, he's pretty much been behind for the majority of it. But it is starting to even out more. It's still in favor of Golden, but it is evening out. As Golden does come to this fifth base, but a little bit too late, buddy. A little bit too late indeed. One thing that Grubby did exceptionally well this game was he didn't overestimate the Muta flock. Mm. He sent like he just dealt with his Muta flock with a very small amount of Phoenix. And you can if you micro great. And that's exactly what Grubby did. Upon seeing the mutas in his main, he was like, okay, I'm gonna take quite a bit of damage here. I'm gonna warp in stalkers, I'm gonna deal with them with my Phoenix, it'll take some time, but I'm gonna make sure that Golden's economy doesn't spiral out of control. So great, great play by Grubby. And here is first person from Grubby. He's actually got a dark templar on that hatchery up north, which is doing damage to the new fifth base of Golden. Not gonna kill it, he knows it, so he actually switches over towards the uh, the drones as much as he can while of course picking up a queen here and there dealing with the harassment from the locusts oh but Please the locusts careful. infestors are out now they don't have pathogen glands it's a mistake not getting that upgrade but they do have energy now yeah and these locusts they're getting closer and closer to grubby's base so mm. he needs those colossi out pretty soon there are two on the field which is great and the level of upgrades that grubby's getting too very, very solid. Grubby's army is getting really strong now. And whenever you have a Protoss against a Zerg on equal bases at this stage of the game, yeah. it's a st it gets scary and scary for Zerg. And, and Grubby should have that south base away and keep Golden away from that south base. But Grubby also has access to the gold later on, which he can take. So he's got a lot more money left in this game to use as well. War Prison is going to be used for Grubby to get towards the main base, you'd imagine, since he's controlling the skies with the Phoenixes now. Even getting... Oh. Ooh. He may have spotted that, not sure. I think he might have. I think he might have too, yeah. and he now knows what he can't let happen, which is a fungal on all those Phoenix, because that would be game ending. And three Tempests on the way. I like where he's going with this. 
Groby's got to be careful, I think, to not have his army separated. Like, the Phoenix is on one side and then all the others on the other. Because, I mean, the others on the south side. Because imagine if the Corruptors dart in towards these Colossus. They're dead. They are. I mean, he's got a lot of Stalkers covering the Colossi, so it's kind of smart. But I, I, he, he also has to make sure that he doesn't lose any tech in his main or have those Mutas fly in and pick yeah. off some valuable buildings. So it's hard to balance. It, it is very hard to balance. And he's doing a god, good job of keeping these Locusts at bay, but gradually they do start wearing down the Protoss, no matter how, what kind of army you have. All right, well, Gordon's uh, you know fully going towards the Swarmhost now and also looking towards the ultimate army. I'd imagine we see a Great Aspire coming soon with the Hive about to complete and just building that ultimate slow death army. But Grubby's got Tempests out now. He's added on more gateways. He can take a fifth soon, and that Warp Prism's now active. And it's going towards the gold, I would imagine, is actually more of a better target than the uh, the main base to slow that income down, which has already been hurt of Goldens. One of the things for Grubby that he has to take advantage of here is the fact that, yes, that gold is a valuable target here, but even though you mine the minerals faster at that point in time, they're... Oh, what a sick fungal! He finally got the fungal he wanted there, and the Stalkers blink forward to support. The Phoenixes are staying alive here, but are they going to get away? They do get away, and there are no Infestors. The Colossus and Stalkers blinking forward have stopped them, but he is going to lose a couple of back-end Tempests there while Harassment continues on to the gold. A nice move from Golden, but Grubby saves his Phoenixes if he lost those. Oh, that would have been insane all game. He could have lost the game. Yeah, it would have been game ending. This game's getting tense now. So Grubby doing great harass and does take out that goal. We did say that could be a point that he wants to attack. And he did it just not with his main army. So Grubby's playing smart here. He's taking fights at the bottom of the map, places which Golden doesn't want to. So these Locusts, they are mm. keeping this army at bay for now. But Grubby, he's, he continues to do damage. And he's got an Observer with that army, so he's actually clearing the creep spread, which is one of the biggest problems down here, because this creep spread is pushed so close to Grubby. Uh, and overall, he's doing okay, but still. A big switch up, actually. This is interesting. Or well, not a big one, but a, an interesting one. Link Hydra. Not sure how much of a purpose they have in this game. Well, he's getting Vipers out, so hoping to pull the Colossi into mm. those Locusts. They may be overwhelming. But what is it? Three more Stargates on the way for Grubby? Oh, that Mothership Core. Oh, he's making good use of this, actually. Focusing down the Vipers, too, with those Phoenix. It's nice play by Grubby. And he's switching over to Void Rays to start to be able to deal correctly uh, with the Corruptors, who are chasing the Phoenixes after realizing that... Uh, they they number them quite a bit. Fight. Grubby's got a low supply, but obviously he's got a lot of money, so he's waiting to build the right army, which is the three extra Stargates and Templar now. Ah, uh, Grubby's coming together with, like, a really sick composition here. So much air. And how do you really deal with Void Rays, Tempest, this... Supported by Storms. Yeah. You, you, you can't really. Yeah. And I mean, there's still quite a few Swarm Hosts on the field. We have 14 of them. Have they been put... Oh, just kind of sacrificed all these Phoenix. But with no Mutus on the field, they don't really serve a purpose, yeah. I guess, anymore. It looks like Golden's finally locked down his gold with with Static D. He's got that south. The the. It's like the... Um, it's like a bunker location for Golden down here. With all the spines, all the spores, that is the ultimate goal of Grubby to be able to defeat this area. That's not a goal that can happen anytime soon. He's going to have to set himself some smaller ones. Ooh, this Ling Rumbai still getting through that tight gap between the Zealots, so it does get into the main base. Will they be able to accomplish much? Well, they don't actually have very good upgrades, so mm. Grubby's Zealots do deal with them still very easily. Well, yes, they do. Um, Grubby's still holding Ooh. this fifth base. He wants to take the gold soon, but uh, I guess he can't take that quite yet as the Mutilus and Corruptors or just a few... Well, there is Mutilus there too. We'll push this back again. Mothership Core on the way even in this game. Yeah, it's actually more cost efficient for Grubby to sit on this base here with the Mothership Core with his army to not lose a lot to the Locust Waves. Oh, dear. But this is bad. Oh, there was a lot of probes that just went down on that base, I think. I'm not sure, actually. It looked like a lot. Maybe I'm just seeing things. I think just a few of them patched on the same spot, and it's just that multiple ones are dying. Grubby's probe count is still at a huge 74 against yeah, the 48 not, of Golden. Whoa. He's ca oh, look at all these Tempests that are going to pop out. These Corruptors are right here. Oh, uh, this is not good. That's uh, not cost efficient at all. Grubby's coming back with some of his Void Rays here. He's got to leave his Colossus down the bottom. A really good move here. A weak spot spotted by Golden. And Grubby does have to defend it, but that was a really nice cost efficient movement and a strategical point for Golden to abuse, and he did. That was really good. Yeah, Golden, the resources lost have. For a while, Grubby was trading very, very efficiently against his opponent, but now Golden 
taking superb fights. Yeah. And again, this gold base under five, I agree with you. And this is a lot of corruptors against only Tempest. I think this is a huge mistake for Groovy being here. Yeah, this is oh, this is really bad. He's going to lose a lot of these Tempest. Golden, a beautiful switch back into Mutalisks after the Phoenixes have been killed. Oh, God. Capitalizes on these high supply, expensive units. And he just slaughters that air army. The Col oh. Colossus aren't going to help out, mate. No, the Colossus. And the Mothership. Oh. oh, the Mothership dying immediately, too. This is so much damage being done. And GG yeah. is called. Wow, that seemed to spiral out of control ever so quickly. Yeah. For that was, Grubby. That was really good by uh, Golden. To identify what the biggest weakness, really, of Grubby was, that he didn't have the Phoenixes anymore. He didn't have Archons. didn't have a lot of Stalkers. didn't have Templar. Didn't really have anything to answer Mutalus, so I switch back in again. Yeah, once and, all uh, those Phoenix died, yeah. uh, as easy as one, Golden, two, three. Golden saw an opening. It was like, hey, your anti air is somewhat lacking here, and uh, took full advantage of getting back into Mutas. And Grubby, unfortunately, he was defending the, the Locust very well. He had a good number of Colossi down there. Yeah. In fact, the perfect number of Colossi to defend off that wave, but. His tech switch, it was just, it was a great idea, but Golden took the one advantage he could and got on top of those Stargates. So, uh, unfortunately, Grubby is eliminated here in last place in today's group, which means our next two games are going to be the winners to decide who is first, and then the deciders to decide who is second. So our next game coming up here will be Mana versus First. Before that, we will be going into a winner's interview with Golden. Um, but a tough road ahead of Golden now. A really tough road ahead of him. He doesn't really want to play against First again. I think First dismantled him, and you don't really want to play against Mana either. Mana played yeah. ridiculously well against Grubby, but, you know, First against Mana, that's the next series up, and Golden, I th he must be happy with this win. He has to be. Yeah, he'll be happy with this, and I'd be uh, expecting him to hope to play Mana. But for me, at least, as, as much as I think First is going to do very well this season, I wouldn't count Mana out against him in this winner's match, which could really make this group interesting if we were to see a Polish victory in a Polish first place, which so far in WCS has been a lot of upsets and anything seems to happen here. It certainly does, and PvP is a matchup where th crazy things do happen. While the matchup has somewhat rounded itself out a little bit with things like oracles that can be used and just build, like solid build order counters yesterday, even though Wellmu you know, he was a bit of a surprise. He stomped MC with some solid build order counter, right. so anything's possible. Mana could do the same here. We'll see in our next match. But before we get to that, Red Eye is standing by with the winner's interview. Thank you very much, Sean. Yes, I am here with Golden, and uh, well done. Fantastic game. Game one looked relatively easy. Was it easy? Yeah, it was too easy because I know I knew his tactics because I had I knew the. I watched my BUD, which I played uh, WCS against MC, and my weakest is, I mean, if he does a uh, Colossi Orient, he can beat me easily. So I prepared so hard against Colossi Orient, so <laughs> that's why I win easily. Okay, and then map, map two is much tougher though. It was, looked like you could win, then looked like you would lose, and then looked like you could win. The game is... <laughs> I really hate that game because I, I thought I already win this game because I, I depended successfully his Warp of Reason. And <laughs> I thought if I go to Muta, just win easily because he doesn't have a Phoenix at, this t at the time, but he has uh, so many armies and DTs everywhere. So <laughs> So, Crazy I'm, game. Yeah, I'm so sorry to pants if you if your eyes are broken. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sorry if your eyes are broken. I don't think they are, so I think you're okay. Um, it's great to have you in WCS Europe. You tried to qualify in WCS America, and you obviously played in Challenger in WCS Korea as well. Why why has it been easier in Europe? Easier uh, players? No, uh, of course, of course, is Korea is the world, uh, most hardest region in the world, and when I played uh, Dervishes America, I already decided to retire when I decided to retire in 2013, November. <laughs> when I decided to play in Dervishes Europe, I'm playing uh, really hard. Uh, it's, that's why my, I'm playing pretty well in Dervishes Europe. And you're talking about retirement, but you're 19. You can't retire yet. Uh, I retired because 
I, <laughs> I thought I had to go military in this year, March, but it was not. I have to go military in December, so I, play, I can play game until November 9th. <laughs> That's the date of I joined the military. So I have to win some tournaments before go Mr. go military. So November this year, you have to go military? Yeah. Okay. So we wish you the best of luck then, because you only have a few to, to win right now. Yeah, my goal is, of course, win double chess. And if my skill has grown up, uh, my goal is uh, win up BlizzCon. But it's so far away, so I have to prepare it so hard. Well played and congratulations for winning against Grubby. It's a great win and we'll see whether he can make it one more win in the group because if he does, he's in the quarterfinals of WCS Europe. Next up though, it's the winner's bracket game between Mana and First for our first place in Group C.